David Burstein, founder and CEO, Run for America. Nice to see you once again at the Milken Institute Global Conference. Your organization seeks to better engage millennials in politics. What progress are you seeing? Well, it's actually interesting. Across the country, there are actually a number of people who are actually running for office, a number of whom we're helping, who are of this generation. So people have been saying, you know, when are these millennials going to get up and do something? Well, you know, two of them are running, three of them are running for mayors across the country, uh, several of them are running for Congress, and we're actually seeing for the first time the response this generation is having to the negativity and the gridlock in Washington is to say, you know what? I'll stand up, I'll throw my hat in, my, in the ring. I don't have 25 years of experience in politics, but you know, we've actually seen that response in a really exciting way. And it's one of the stories I don't think is really being talked about. And some of these people may not win, uh, but their energy and their enthusiasm and their willingness to actually step forward is really inspiring. I think represents the best of this generation. And I think all of us really understand the need for a new kind of leadership, particularly given what's going on at the presidential level. Which might explain why there was a gravitation toward Bernie Sanders on the Democratic side among young college-age students, uh, but Donald Trump's been interesting too in terms of how he tries to reach not just everyone, but millennials in particular with social media. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really the Trump candidacy is really the first candidacy where I think social media is actually playing a really significant role in helping propel him. And he can post something and it can dominate a news cycle for a week just by one stroke of a tweet. We really haven't seen anything like that before. The other thing that's interesting is that he's actually been able to listen to the country, listen to people, the reason that he's sort of channeling these things. He's not making these things up entirely. They're coming from what he's reading and seeing and responding to on social media. Uh, I don't know that it's actually working with millennials, though. It's not really engaging millennials, even though millennials obviously spend a lot of time on social media. Uh, he hasn't been able to break through because he doesn't connect with some of the core values people in this generation, and the, the rhetoric he's been using is very much turning off people in this generation. So it's an interesting lesson, perhaps, for other politicians that you can't just assume tweeting and posting stuff on Instagram is really going to reach maybe a target audience you're looking for. Yeah, it's a tool, right? I mean, you know, we always have to keep in mind technology, social media is a tool to amplify a message. And what Trump has done effectively is figure out how to take social media and put it in the front and center of the mainstream news cycle. It's generated over four billion dollars in earned media in this election cycle, which is unbelievable. It's unheard of. Another topic that I want to switch gears with you on is something you're speaking about here, and that's preparing the workforce for tomorrow. And if you look at what's happening in corporate America, are companies responding they, the way they should to the younger generation of workers that are now coming on board? You know, you read these things that there are these cool offices that people work in, and there's snacks and everything, but it, is something else wanted that's not being provided? I think there is, and it's actually something that's being missed by companies and by the people who are in government today, which is that the fundamental nature of work has shifted dramatically. It's not about the bells and whistles and the cool offices. It's about a shift in terms of people's jobs becoming more than a paycheck, becoming so tied to their personal identity, how they identify themselves. It's about people wanting meaning out of their work, people wanting to feel like they're not just you know, some, you know, pushing some button somewhere, but they're contributing to society or they're on a pathway to do that. It's about people wanting to be entrepreneurs, start their own businesses. Um, and I don't think we've really accepted that, that the nature of work what people are seeking, they're seeking much more from it than it is set up to provide. Not that dissimilar to the shift that happened in education, where people are, you know, education, our education system was not set up to provide employment for all these people. Uh, it was set up to provide elite opportunity for a few, and now it's having to struggle because it has to provide mass employment. Same thing is happening with the work, and the sooner that politicians understand that, that shift, and the sooner that businesses understand that shift, I think we're going to start to see a lot more productivity and opportunity that comes out of that. I think we're in the middle of, you know, some companies are figuring out, others are not, uh, but that's, I think, a, a real breaking point will come on that in the next couple of years, I predict. David Burstein, always a pleasure to speak with you. Likewise. Great to see you, too.